In the focus of my presentation today, titled, What's this bug in my beans, is about identifying some of the insect pests that we encounter in Tennessee soybeans. Dr. Scott Stewart, who's the extension entomologist at UT, has a really nice video posted on YouTube about the nuts and bolts of scouting soybeans and another on uh, insect identification of some of our more common insect pests. And I want to encourage you all to watch them as my presentation is meant to supplement that material. We'll post those links later in the presentation. And I'd also like to recognize that Dr. Stewart took the great photographs that we get to see today. So let's get started with some bug ID. Green stink bugs are our number one common insect pest in Tennessee soybeans. Now most are familiar with the green stink bug adults. They're large, showy, robust green insects. I like to think of them as kind of the incredible hulk of the stink bug world. All stink bug pests are seed feeders, and populations tend to build throughout the growing season and often peak around R5 or R6 when those seeds are developing in the pods. Here we have a picture of green stink bug egg masses and fresh hatchouts. The barrel-shaped eggs are laid in a cluster of 20 to 100 on a leaf. They are creamy white when they're fresh laid, and they get darker as they get closer to hatching. Here's a picture of the fresh hatch out with first instar immatures. The picture on the upper right is immatures that have just emerged, and the lower picture shows them after just a bit, and notice the color difference. Immatures go through several instars and colors, and color pattern varies as they grow from one instar to another. Now we need to be able to recognize the various color stages of immature stink bugs because all stages count towards the treatment threshold, whether immature or adult. These are all pictures of green stink bug immatures, and these are as well. Now brown stink bugs are another very common species in Tennessee beans, and this is the brown stink bug adult. To me, the brown immatures looks like a softer insect and is light, almost a lime green or tannish in color. Green stink bugs and brown stink bugs are the most common species found in Tennessee beans. However, it has become easier lately to find brown marmorated stink bugs in our beans as well, and these are seed feeding pests also. The adult looks similar to the brown stink bug adult as both have round shoulders and alternating dark and light bands at the margins of the abdomen. How you can tell if it's a brown marmorated stink bug is that it will have alternating bands of light and dark color on the antennae, and sometimes the legs, and the brown stink bug does not. Late instar immatures are black or gray in color and have noticeable white bands on the antennae and legs. The bodies look rather thin and flat to me. They also have spines along the shoulders, and they look very different from green or brown immature stink bugs. Now, other plant feeding species that may be present in our Tennessee soybeans include the red-shouldered stink bug and the dusky brown stink bug. The southern green stink bug is less common, but may be found after warm winters, particularly in the southernmost counties. The red-banded stink bug is an invasive species that may also be observed in some areas of the state. And like the southern green stink bug, Red bandits are more likely to occur after a very mild winter. It is important to correctly identify the kinds of stink bugs being found in our beans because some species are more difficult to control with insecticides than others. So let's look at two of the most common defoliating caterpillars. These insects feed on the leaves of soybean plants. Now many different species of caterpillars crawl along in that looping inchworm fashion, so you really can't accurately identify what the larvae are just by if they move this way. Both green clover worms and soybean loopers, two pests of soybean, may move in this inchworm fashion, but these pests have very different treatment thresholds, so that's why it's important to correctly identify them. Green clover worm is our most common defoliating caterpillar and may be found at any time during the growing season. The caterpillar is green, slender, and gets about one inch long. All caterpillars we are interested in have these legs at the front of the body called true legs and this pair at the back end of the body at the last abdominal segment. But the legs we are interested in are these in the middle. They are called prolegs, and the number of pairs of prolegs in the middle of the body is often how we can distinguish between caterpillar species. The way I remember to tell if it's a green clover worm versus a looper is that clover worm has three syllables. Clover worms have three pairs of prolegs in the middle of the body. This distinguishes it from other caterpillars found in soybeans. Additionally, they will also wriggle spastically if you put one in the palm of your hand and prod him just a little bit. This is a looper. Looper, two syllables, two O's in the word looper, two pairs of prolegs in the middle of the body. 
And we can have both cabbage loopers and soybean loopers in Tennessee, and both may be present in our fields at the same time. Both cabbage and soybean loopers are green in color and have two pairs of prolegs in the middle of the body. They are defoliators also. And after some experience, you'll be able to tell them apart just by looking. Clover worms are about the same size along the length of the body. However, the body of the soybean looper tends to be skinnier at the head and progressively gets thicker and larger near the rear. In other words, it has a skinny head and a big booty. So we want no comments from the audience on any resemblance of this description to today's speaker. Loopers may reach a length of 1.3 inches long. Also, we need to distinguish between cabbage loopers and soybean loopers because soybean loopers are considerably more difficult to control. Cabbage loopers will not have any black on their bodies, no spots or black true legs. Now, soybean loopers may or may not have black on their bodies. I know this is somewhat ambiguous, but perhaps a more helpful clue is when they occur during the growing season. Cabbage loopers may occur any time, and treatable infestations of loopers prior to August, while they are uncommon, are likely to be cabbage loopers. Soybean loopers are typically found later in the growing season, in mid-August and September. Also, late maturing varieties are much more likely to be infested with soybean loopers. So as a general rule of thumb, if you find loopers in your beans late in the season, assume at least a percentage of them are soybean loopers. Defoliation isn't the most severe damage this next caterpillar inflicts. Larvae of the corn earworm, also called the bowworm or podworm, may cause occasional but serious damage to soybean by feeding on flowers and pods. Large caterpillars may be green, brown, or yellow, with light and dark stripes running the length of the body, and they also have sparse hairs on the bodies. Larvae reach a length of one and a half inches long, and they have four pairs of prolegs and a pale brown or orangish head. The lighter colored head capsule helps to identify corn earworm from other caterpillars you may find in the field. Corn earworms occur most often in late maturing fields, and especially those with a fairly open canopy. Bean leaf beetles are part of the defoliating beetle complex. Adult bean leaf beetles are almost always present in soybean fields and sometimes cause economic injury. Bean leaf beetles can be tan, red, with spots, without spots, or other colors, but all bean leaf beetles will have a rear-facing black triangle on the wings just behind the thorax. These beetles damage soybean plants by chewing holes in leaves and may occasionally feed on pods. Holes in leaves are roughly spherical in shape. Early season infestations are often concentrated in the first soybeans to emerge in the area if the seed was not treated with an insecticide seed treatment. However, most economic damage is caused by defoliation of larger beans from later generations. Late season infestations of bean leaf beetles are often worst in the latest maturing fields. Bean leaf beetle is also a vector of bean pod model virus. Among other symptomology, this virus may cause green stem syndrome, where the soybean stem stays green even after the plant and seed has matured, which may make harvest more difficult. However, rarely is an economic loss from this virus a major concern in Tennessee soybeans. Japanese beetles feed on over 300 different plants, and soybeans are one of them. Adults are oval-shaped and have a bright metallic green head and thorax with copper-colored hardened wings and a row of five spots of white hairs on each side of the abdomen below the wings. Adults typically emerge from late May through July and often feed in small clusters. They feed primarily on the upper foliage of soybean, eating the leaf tissue between the leaf veins and leaving a lace-like skeleton. You don't want to handle blister beetles if you catch some in your net as they secrete a toxin from their legs that can burn or blister your skin. Adults are soft-bodied beetles and are approximately three quarters of an inch long. The striped blister beetle has alternating dark brown and yellowish orange stripes along the length of the body. The margin blister beetle is black with a gray border along the margins of its wing covers. The prothorax of blister beetles, the area between the head and the wings, is narrower than the head and the wings. Adults of both species, and especially the striped blister beetle, feed in clusters and skeletonized soybean leaves, making large and irregular holes between the leaf veins. Feeding is typically localized to a few small areas of the field, and oftentimes they will leave a soybean field as quickly as they arrived. Infestations of kudzu bugs have been reported from most soybean producing areas of Tennessee. Adult kudzu bugs are about the same size as adult lady beetles. They are approximately a quarter inch long, almost square in shape, with a brown to olive green hue. The immature stagers are more rounded, smaller, and look hairy. Kudzu bugs are generally found on the stems where they feed on plant juices. They do not feed on seeds. 
Eggs of kudzu bugs are light colored, barrel shaped, and placed on leaves or other plant parts in two rows. It takes many kudzu bugs to cause economic damage to soybean, but infestation levels may reach hundreds of bugs per plant. The adult three-cornered alfalfa hopper is a green, wedge-shaped insect about a quarter inch long. They are an occasional pest of soybeans. Nymphs are similar but smaller and have spines along the back. The adults are very mobile and strongly hop when they are disturbed. Adults and nymphs feed by inserting their piercing sucking mouth parts and girdling the circum circumference of stems or leaf petioles. A girdle is created at the site of the feeding. Plants may snap over while walking through the field or during a storm if three-cornered alfalfa hoppers, typically the adults, have girdled the main stem of plants when they were less than 10 to 12 inches tall. Lodging is often observed long after the girdle was made and when plants are no longer susceptible to damage. Leaves may be seen turning brown where petioles have been girdled. Feeding by three-cornered alfalfa hopper does not cause yield loss unless lodging occurs, and especially when this lodging occurs during the mid or late reproductive stages of soybean growth. We can occasionally find Dectes stem borers in Tennessee soybeans in late June through August. Dectes are members of the aptly named longhorn beetle family. The antennae are as long or longer than the body. The adult beetle is gray and approximately three-eighths of an inch in length. The adult female beetle chews a small hole in the leaf petiole, or less commonly in stems, where she lays a single egg. The egg hatches into a larva and as it grows it moves from an infested leaf petiole into the main stem where it tunnels within the pith of the main stem until the plant matures. However, this tunneling in leaf petioles or in the main stem has little direct effect on yield. Fall armyworm is a multicolored striped caterpillar. Like corn earworm, they also have four pairs of prolegs. But one defining characteristic is that fall armyworms often has, have a prominent light colored inverted Y on a dark colored head. However, the head of this species is often lighter in color when it occurs on soybean, in pastures, or on weedy grasses. Corn earworm lacks the inverted Y on the head capsule. Fall armyworms may appear smoother bodied. They may feed on leaves, stems, and pods. Economically damaging infestations are most common in late maturing fields. Serious damage is sometimes seen when larvae occur on weedy grasses within the field and move on to soybean after they've eaten all the grass or the grasses are removed with a herbicide application. Infestations also may be worse along field edges where grasses are present. Grasshoppers are commonly observed in soybean but are only an occasional pest. The color patterns of grasshoppers vary considerably because there are multiple species observed in soybean. Colors change as they molt from one life stage to another and because their colors may change to match the environment. Grasshoppers feed pri primarily on foliage and are part of the defoliating pest complex in soybean, but feeding on flowers, pods, and other plant parts is sometimes observed. Plants are most susceptible to damage when they are small from the time of emergence to V2. Adults of some species can exceed two inches in length. Other occasional insect pests which may be present in soybean fields but we will not go into detail at this time include thrips, cutworms, soybean aphid, Mexican bean beetles, yellow striped armyworms, bead armyworms, spider mites, salt marsh caterpillars, and velvet bean caterpillars. So here are the links to Dr. Stewart's soybean scouting and bug ID videos. I encourage you all to check them out. UT has many other sources of additional information about soybean scouting and pest ID available, starting with your local county ag extension agent. These folks are very knowledgeable and can help answer all your soybean questions. The utcrops.com website news blog is where extension specialists post articles about what's currently going on in the field, and Dr. Stewart has a plethora of great photographs of insects on the photo gallery. Please check out the UT Pest Guides mobile app. You'll find lots of information and pictures there also. The Insect Control Guide is a great source of information about control options for insect pests and other related topics. Finally, thank you farmers for growing our soybeans. We hope our work at UT somehow helps y'all. Thanks for your support of the Tennessee Soybean Checkoff. Thanks also to the Tennessee Soybean Promotion Board for their support of our soybean research and extension programs. I thank y'all for tuning in to Virtual Milan No-Till Field Day. Happy scouting!